downstream applications. Great. I appreciate that many of you in this room will have come from very much an upstream background. Not all, but many of you. So the crucial thing from my perspective, if I can make the next slide work, is how many of you have actually talked to any of the other departments in your universities, which I bet will be working with some angle of space. Can I have hands up for who has? It's not actually all that many of you. Can I suggest you might want to go home and investigate that angle? Because many of the examples that you've already seen here today will have come out of some of those departments and may actually open up some connections within your universities that you could be relating and engaging with those other departments and your students could be learning something from them. So what are downstream applications? You've heard a lot about some of those today. Crucially, we are looking at that kind of value in terms of our our domestic product. That's a lot of money on the back of space applications and satellite enabled services. And those services are coming from not just Earth observation data that we've seen quite a lot of, but telecommunications, navigation, position navigation and timing in my world, and also meteorology and joining up those dots to to combine varieties of different data sets, giving us wider reach, giving us more information, and, and helping us deliver products and services that are, are really connected in this, in this growing connected world. So some of those will be in government. I'm going to give you quite a few examples from the Space for Smarter Government program that um, Sam alluded to earlier and indeed Resitech talked about as well. Connecting with the emergency services. You may have been watching the news last night about the, the fires on Saddleworth Moor. Now, as part of that, data, as part of the disasters charter, data has been released from um, satellite providers to the emergency services so that they can actually determine where the fire's going, what wind's coming in now, where's it going to be in 10 minutes' time. It's that real and it can be that real. In terms of energy, it's about pulling information together. Uh, it may be, there'll be an example a little bit later about um, using different types of weather data to help uh, countries determine what kind of um, renewable resources they can put where. In terms of energy and our general utilities that we're using every day, we would not have the kind of systems that we have today without timing signals coming from satellites saying switch it on, switch it off, open this gate, close that gate. It's absolutely imperative and part of our critical national infrastructure. Finance, again, same as, same, effectively the same as, as energy. Timing signals from satellites control financial transactions every minute of every day. Tim was kind enough to show us some examples, of, some forestry examples of, of um, ag use in agriculture and food production. Um, I was working with uh, an organisation last year who were taking soil moisture information, combining that with growth profiles in, uh, of a particular crop in about November, combining that, looking at forward, okay, what's the what's the actual um, delivery of that crop going to be like in February? Is it good enough for our supermarkets in February? No? Right, let's go buy it somewhere else. That's actually happening and being and working now. Water resources, a lot of water resources around the globe come from snow. If you can model what the depth of your snowpack is, the extent of your snowpack, and then weather will help you work out when how much you're going to get at each stage. Healthcare products have been in the press a lot over the last um, 48 hours, not least because um, Stuart Adlin, Stu oh, Stuart from the Catapult and my colleague Emily Greystock have been, and Nick I think, have been all over the BBC 
um, talking about health applications for the NHS and how those might be developed. And I'll give you some links to some of that. We'll talk about that a bit later. Um, knowledge of suspended particulates in the atmosphere, atmospheric quality. Being able to model that, being able to understand that, and then deliver those that information to an app on somebody's phone that tells them that they need to buck up their their inhalation of steroids, say, because they're an asthmatic, and they, you know, that we know that the particulates are going to be bad, or the pollen's going to be bad tomorrow or next week. Really important to help. It's also about helping with long-term planning. Going back to the the, um, the the agricultural product, you know, if you can determine, as Owen just talked about, what you can predict what your delivery is going to be like three or four months hence, you as an organisation have an opportunity to mitigate your buying power and where it's going to go. A few examples of some of the places that applications of space data have gone. Um, I've added on, this is, this is from Colin Baldwin's slide, he's, he's used it for a <coughs> variety of things. I've added the rider's mate one. So I happen to be a horse rider. More importantly, my daughter is a horse rider and she rides at a very high level. I sometimes have to ride that horse and it's quite feisty. Um, this is a product that attaches to me as a rider to the horse. If we become detached, it tells my nearest and dearest where I am static on the ground and where the horse has buggered off to. That's quite important for lots of situations. You could be a cyclist, you could be a motorcyclist, whatever. Again, it's that location information which is so crucial there. So what's in the toolbox? In terms of AI and analysis and data analytics, as Owen's just talked about, as everybody's just talked about today, some of those are the skills that people are looking for and that people want and that people are considering. I know that all, pretty much all of your students, if they're coming from an engineering background, will have quite a few of those. They may not know it, but they'll have quite a few of it. And if you can help them understand that, that even they, if they decide at some stage that engineering is not the direction that they want to go, using Nick's terminology, they can be repurposed. It may be useful for them. So some of these areas that we're looking at particularly are where we get this intersection of these different types of skills with different types of information in different sectors and understanding how those can begin to work together and exploring how those can work together because you've come up with an interesting problem or you've heard about an interesting problem with somebody that you've been talking to can be very beneficial. So we want actionable insights in some of those areas. So for example, one project that um, I think I've got a little bit of information about further on and I talked about it earlier, was renewable energy. So there are organizations out there who are combining the weather and climate information in and one of our IPP programs that's looking at sun, incoming solar radiation, tying that in with weather, other weather types, and satellite imagery to look at where you might situate a solar farm. Putting that together with, satis with sensors on the ground that may be connected through satcoms or Internet of Things or other types of or Wi-Fi or whatever, and social media can actually build you a very, very powerful product. And that kind of information, Owen was talking about it going to um, insurers and the like. Yeah, most of you wouldn't even have thought, perhaps, that you would be working within an insurance situation. Most insurers wouldn't think that they were necessarily using space data, but actually it's fundamental at the bottom of it all. So to give you some ideas about um, some of the places that the Space for Smarter Government program has been working with um, 
some example um, products that have been coming out. Argan's in, near, in um, Plymouth looking at monitoring plastics in the ocean and different types of data set. In, that, in this case, they've been using radar and optical imagery with um, high resolution commercial data and social, social media information. Looking at soil moisture and being able to determine whether or not you've got slippage, say, on the sides of um, railway cuttings. If you've got a railway cutting that is perhaps going to be undermined because the, the embankments are very damp, that you get a landslip onto the, onto the railway lines, that's a big problem for everybody. Again, and that uses position navigation and timing information as well as radar and the um, interferometric radar that uh, Sam was talking about earlier. A health demonstrator where you're combining atmospheric mo monitoring with air pollution sensors on the ground as well. What a scientist, Lewis was here earlier. Yes, hi. <laughs> um, and an example of, of a demonstrator feasibility project that um, they're running at the moment to look at um, maritime environments and how, whether or not you can monitor you know, how, how busy particular areas are, particularly for small leisure craft, where you might have a risk of collision or and local knowledge is absolutely imperative. So I thought I'd throw some ideas of some of the, um, the calls and competitions that potentially could be open to your student. I'm not, students. I'm not suggesting perhaps that this, the call, the four million pound call that was announced yesterday, the NHS to, with the Space Agency one, but the satellite competition is a really interesting one for your students, as long as they're prepared for it. I met um, two medics here last week who were one of the, in, the winners. They were interviewed, they had a Dragon's Den style um, event on Tuesday, I think, and um, BBC and others covered that. And they, they're looking at using drones that are um, connected with communications and PNT to deliver sort of perhaps vaccines from a centralized hospital in, in a remote area or to a remote area where there might be, say, an outbreak of Ebola. You don't know yet, but the nurse, perhaps the single healthcare worker out in the village can send back the blood, blood samples or whatever, the te you know, the tests that she's done to a connected hospital via drones not on the roads that are full of potholes, not reliant on whether or not they've got the petrol to put in the car to get there, but a quick drone that can take it there and take the vaccines back. Now, that's pretty amazing. I mean, you can think that that's, in that kind of an environment is, can be groundbreaking, but even here, where you, if you were stuck in a traffic jam, actually that, that might be the blood, the, the blood pack that makes a difference to your life. Or to your loved one's life. Anyway, over to you. Thank you very much.